But if I die, I won't eat it. Bury me inside Louis store. What's going on everybody? It's Andrew from the Fun Gross. I'm here with AB. We're in Taipei City right now at a very, very famous but local night market. This is not the Ningxia night market, not the Xilin night market. This is a spot that really only locals go to. This is the Yansan night market. When we were on the taxi ride here, the cab driver was like, oh my God, you guys know where you're going. We're here with Jean. She is a professional tour guide with Taipei Eats Tours. You're gonna help us navigate through this night market that's extremely unique. Lots of the shops here have been here for decades and now it's in second generation that's running the shops. So we could check out some of the food here. Let's go! We're at a stall that's been here since 1954. First thing we're going to have is sticky rice sausage and also the pork sausage. A lot of people had it in the night markets as the Taiwanese hot dog, but here we're having it in the most traditional way. Yo, this barbecue chicken is also very famous. I mean, look at it, I can see it steaming. I like the skin, there's very little batter on that. Okay, we have the famous Taiwanese sticky rice and the famous Taiwanese sausage from a very, very traditional cart. Oh wait, the chicken came out. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Yo, so after they chop up the chicken, they remarinate it really quickly flash cook it again that looks delicious man all right but well, let's try the traditional Taiwanese sticky rice let's try the sausage eat it with some garlic I like this because a lot of the Taiwanese sausages that I've had are too sweet barbecue chicken they re-lathered it with some ground pepper sauce let's get it that's some of the best chicken I've had in Asia in the more popular night markets, they tend to have more creative food. Whereas this one is definitely where the locals go. So a lot of the food here are still in their traditional form. On to the next spot. This used to be a commuter's night market. It started basically in the 1950s. A lot of people would come here to grab something to eat before they head back across the bridge to where they live. This is like a drive through night market. Okay, we are outside of a very famous sesame noodle cart. We're gonna have sesame noodles and rice noodles. And in Chinese, it's called ma jiang. Ma jiang mian. Famous ma jiang mian. We're just looking at a plate of pork tongue, pork intestine, and tofu. We got some chili oil here, and we got some chili garlic sauce right here. Hey, it's true that Taiwan does have some Southeast Asian influence. That is well marinated and they stewed it long enough where that taste is gone. You don't taste any like gaminess either. All right, I... we got the intestine now. We got a little bit of the house made sauce. I got some ginger and cilantro. There's no gaminess whatsoever, even with the intestine. I don't say this often, but that was actually some pretty good intestine. Yes, I agree. All right, tofu. That fried tofu is good too. We have this two kinds of sesame noodles. This is the wheat noodle and this is the rice noodle. This is actually a Hakka influenced dish. If you guys don't know what Hakka is, we did a whole video about it in LA. This is the sesame noodles, AKA Ma Jiang. That's good, man. It's a really soft noodle. This is in-house made noodles. Man, it doesn't get fresher than this. It's very creamy, very light, but also has a very strong, like nutty slash meaty taste. I'm used to eating this dish cold. So even with the heat, I feel like it's making the sauce feel a little bit different. Let me just splash it with the chili oil. All right. I'm gonna go with the garlic chili paste. Sesame noodles, good. Mm. What's the last time you've seen something like this outside? Very nostalgic feeling in this market. Yo, hold up guys. I saw this on the street. You gotta take a look at it. What kind of style of hot pot is this? This is called chou chou guo, which means stinky hot pot. <laughs> they call it stinky pot because a lot of the pots have stinky tofu in it. Right. Stinky tofu, if you guys don't know, fermented fried tofu. Let's keep it moving. We took a quick detour from the tour, and we're here at this goat meat stand. I'm pretty interested. They, I heard they have goat meat bone marrow. So we're going to have this quick stir fry bone marrow. This is goat spinal cord. And what I love is that she added a little extra scallions, you know, I requested the chong. I've never had a texture like that. Yeah, it's really hard to chew. And there's this fattiness that melts away in your mouth at first, and then there's kind of this like chewiness, this tendon-like feeling here 
It's kind of weird, but it's kind of good. It doesn't taste bad at all. You just gotta get over the texture when it comes to food like this. Yeah, I would say it almost has a texture of some seafood. A squid, like, you know, a squid, after a while you can chew right through it. This, yeah. I'm still going at it. This goat had a strong back. This is the goat stir fry with water spinach. A lot easier to eat than the spinal cord. <laughs> it almost tastes like beef. So it's supposed to have fortifying properties, so that's why we do we eat it on certain days as well. Usually at the beginning of uh, winter, so that's when we would eat it, so that we could feel stronger for the winter time. Nutrition yeah. for the winter time. At the beginning, you eat a, more goat at the beginning of winter to fortify your body to get it ready for the coughing season. Let's keep it moving. We're going to have savory tang yuan here at this stop. Uh, this restaurant has been here for 50 years. All right, here we got the savory tang yuan, aka sticky rice balls. Uh, these are way bigger than usual. Well, this is why they're famous. There's yeah. some weight to this thing. How many times do you eat a rice ball that's actually bigger than the spoon itself? Outside, it's made with sticky rice. They select sticky rice grain that's over a year old. And then they'll soak it in water, then they mash it. Inside is pork with uh, pepper and shallots and sesame oil. This is almost like a between a mochi and a sticky rice. Yeah. Gotta get in there. There you wow. go. Wow. It it's almost like a dumpling skin. There we go. That tastes a lot like a shaolong bao. Just a little bit right there. I'm gonna fold it back up. This is the best night market I've ever been to. I wanna eat more, but I know we gotta keep it moving because there's a lot more good food out there. Okay, this next spot is right behind us. It is probably the busiest stall here that I've seen. It is the beef noodle soup spot, AKA Neuro Mian. Beef is not the most plentiful meat. It's usually chicken or pork. So when it comes to beef noodle soup, if you tell me that the beef here is really good, I'm excited because you know, getting good beef in Asia is not the easiest thing. the red braise. I can see the little bit of oil on top, but that's a good sign. That just means it's tasty. Let's taste the broth. There's a lot of beef in that broth. That is smooth, yo. Oh, I love this morning glory that they put in there. The beef here, really tender. As soon as I bit into it, it's just falling apart. Very soft. Beef noodle soup is such a great dish to eat. It's such a great comfort food. It's hearty, it's got your carbs, it's got a little bit of veggies, it's got meat, it's got that soup to wash it all down. Man, I mean, this is really like the Chinese pho. Yeah. It's a staple. Here we are outside of a Taiwanese sushi cart. That cart over there, I say, it's in decent shape. With it. I mean, technically, there's nothing weird about it as long as it's still being refrigerated. Yeah. So inside, there's crab meat, there's ham, egg, and uh, cucumber, and pork floss. Okay. Ah, look, they do that little Chinese twist. To ah, it. the pork song, the yeah. roll song. I'm gonna grab a piece after you. Hmm. Kind of tastes like a mixture between a sushi roll, a kimbap, and a fontuan. A little bit different from the Japanese style because it's a different color. All right, this is sashimi, Taiwanese sashimi. Taiwanese sashimi is cut a little bit thicker than traditional Japanese sashimi. Look at the lines on that. Is that good or bad? It looks like a zebra stripe. I don't think it's bad at all. Look how pink it is. I'll go for it. If I die, I won't eat it. Bury me inside Louis store. <laughs> right from the street, not bad sashimi at all. That's pretty good. YOLO. Let's go. Behind me, they are known as the fried noodle experts. They're the walk masters. All right, so next up, we have this stall right here. They specialize in diced tomatoes with ginger sauce. Yo, it's kind of like a tomato salad with ginger sauce dressing. This is a more of a Southern Taiwanese style type of dish. It's eaten a lot in Kaohsiung and Tainan. Okay, whoa, well, all right. That is not what I expected. Wow. I'm gonna try each element of this dipping sauce real quick. What's that? Uh, sugar. Sugar? Yeah, that sugar's really good. This is the ginger right here, Bobby. I like that. So this is just straight up tomato. How's it taste with that sauce? It kind of gives you this fresh pickled taste 
without it having to be pickled. This is maybe one of the most interesting dishes I've actually had this whole food tour. Yeah. It's good. Okay, we are outside of a very, very famous oyster pancake stall. Oyster pancakes, also known as... Ojin! But, you know, I'm gonna be honest, Gene. I'm not the biggest fan of oyster pancakes. Oh. It's not my favorite thing. I think usually most of the time, the oyster that they use is not very high quality and stuff like that. But Gene, can this stall convince me otherwise? I think so, you just have to try it. Oh, she put a little beer on there. That was the touch. All right, let's, let's go seat. eat it. This is the oyster pancake. There's like this crystally clear batter. I always wondered what it was. Well, this is the tapioca starch, basically. Yo, as you can see, it's like kind of this clear, gooey, like, it has a consistency of a, like a rice noodle. Oyster pancake, oyster omelet, whatever you want to call it. This omelet is particularly good, and I found out why. It's because the oysters are smaller. They have less of like a weird taste that people don't like, and you get a really subtle flavor. They almost taste like mussels to me. Yo, look at this. They got the cabbage right there. Mmm. Yo, with a little bit of spicy chili. It's even better, man. All right, on to our last and final stop. We are eating dessert, man. AV, you ready? I'm full, but I'm gonna make space for this one. Right behind us is a cart that's serving delicious Taiwanese shaved ice with hot, sweet mochi on top. We have ice on the bottom with condensed milk. Okay. And then we have the bo mochi rolled in uh, peanut and sugar powder or uh, sesame and sugar powder. Ooh, black sesame. It's a perfect way to cap it off. Oh, really good. And that pretty much wraps up our Yen San night market crawl. Man, it was such a unique night market because it's like a commuter night market. It's not about the games, it's not about the gimmicks. In a way, it's not really about the visuals, it's really about the food and feeding the people. So I felt like this was almost like a, it's like a comfort food night market. Thank you so much, Gene, for being here from Taipei Eats. What was your favorite thing that we ate, man? I like the sausage that we had in the very beginning. Okay. That's just something I just really enjoy. It's really good sausage. My favorite one, definitely that chicken in the beginning at the first cart. Yeah. That like got recooked and lathered up. That was so good. I think uh, Tang Yuan again is always, it's always my favorite. I always have to go with that. It really reminds me of my grandmother. This is the old school street food market. In the comments below, let us know if there's any other hidden night market that you should hit up when you go to Taiwan. I'm pretty glad I checked this one out because I know a lot of people have not been here. So, thank you everybody for watching that video. And until next time, we out. Peace. Telling some of my Taiwanese friends from Taiwan about this spot, and some of them didn't really know. I was like, yo, I'm going to the Yenshan night market. They were like, oh, never been there.